Hey you guys, it's Lolita Girl. So we are here today, uh, we're having a Tiki Tuesday at Lolita Girl headquarters and we have a very special guest here joining us today. My friend and also celebrity makeup artist, Nolan Robert. Hi, Nolan. Hi, guys. How are you? So today, uh, Nolan is going to be doing my makeup. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to him, and he's going to tell you a little bit about the makeup that we're going to be doing today. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, today, I'm going to show you how to do a quick pinup look uh, that's inspired, obviously, to the 50s. So... It's pretty simple, it's pretty easy. I'll go through the tools that you may need and we'll take it step by step. So, are you and ready to get started? I'm ready to get started. This is a great look, you guys. It's gonna be very quick, very easy, and it's something that you can do with any of our uh, Lolita Girl dresses or outfits. So, here we go. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so we're gonna get started on this pinup look. So the first thing I want to tackle is the foundation. Now, for this particular look, you want a matte skin, uh, at least a texture. So, first, obviously, use a moisturizer, and then I like to use a cream foundation and then powder it afterwards. So, we'll get started right away. Okay, Nolan, just make sure to make yes. me look flawless. Yes, well, well <laughs> you are flawless, so it won't be, it won't be that hard. <laughs> so, here we go. All you need is a flat foundation brush, a sponge, and foundation, obviously. So, here we go. Now, Nolan, can they use their own foundation, or what would you suggest? Do you have a foundation, or why don't you tell them what you think might be best for them? Yeah. Um, well, the foundation I'm using currently is from a company called Graftobian. It's my favorite foundation. It's an HD foundation. Unfortunately, I don't have a foundation in my current collection right now, but we are working on something that's similar for, to the texture of my favorite foundation I've been using for years so so until Nolan comes out yes. with his just use whatever you have at home yes just use whatever you have at home <laughs> <laughs> whatever you feel comfortable wearing so Nolan is making me look completely flawless right now yes and that's not very <laughs> hard to do because I think she's already flawless so we're just gonna we love Nolan yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this foundation is amazing because it's HD foundation so the um, pigment is smaller, the texture is smoother, and you can use a flat brush, any, any tool that you have at home. You can use your fingers as well. Let's see. Oh, so flawless, so pretty. Oh. <laughs> All right, so the next part we're gonna do after finishing the foundation application is we're gonna work on the eyebrows. For this particular look, it's all about the eyebrows and the lips. In the 50s, everything was clean lines and it was flawless. You know, think of Jackie O, uh, Lucille Ball, uh, think Betty Page, and something more current like Madonna, Blonde Ambition, or even um, Dita Von Teese. So that's a good reference to uh, refer to. And the eyebrows are really sharp. It arches at the peak and it just kind of feathers down towards the end, creating a nice sharp tail. So let's get started. So I like to start the eyebrows at the inner brow, and you kind of want to match it with the indentation of the nose. That's kind of where you want the eyebrows to start. Right under the eyebrows, and just feather all the way up to the arch. And she already has nice, a nice arch to work with, so it's pretty simple. I'm using a color from my collection called Cafe. It's a nice shadow, so you can use it just a powder pigment. You don't necessarily have to have a brow product. You have flawless brows. Wow, thanks. I love my arches. Yes, we <laughs> love the arch. All right, now that her eyebrows look hella fierce, we are going to move on to the next step, and that's her eyeshadow. And before we're going to do that, I'm going to use a primer, and it's it's really important that you do use a primer because a primer does help with the longevity of your eyeshadow. It helps with the look of the, of the eyeshadow and it helps with the color of the colors that you're picking. So it really allows the color to be true uh, to its shape. Wow, so, I never knew yeah, that. Yeah, so, and it helps. I mean, if, if you're in fitness or if you're working all day, a primer really helps with the, the long wear uh, capabilities. So the one I'm using is from my collection. It's called Erase It and it's pretty phenomenal. So it really does uh, hold well to its... Uh, its name. <laughs> so we're going to start by using a fluffy brush and you just feather 
feather the product all the way to the brow. So simple. All right, guys, now we're going to work on the eyeshadow application now that we're finished uh, priming the eyes. And the first thing I'm going to choose is a matte vanilla shade shadow. And this is from my collection. It's called Shoe Fleur. It's named after my dog. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yes, it's named, you know, it means cauliflower. So. Oh, it does. Yeah, is it that looks kind of like a cauliflower. Yes, it oh. is. We, we, I had a Moulin Rouge, you know, obsession. So that's why oh, I named my dog that. Who, who wouldn't, right? <laughs> so you want a fluffy brush, a fluffy blending brush. Dip it into the product, and it's just really, really simple. Use the flat side of the blending brush. Have the uh, person close or yourself, and just dust the eyeshadow. This is really simple. You don't have to really blend much. Just make sure that it's consistent from the lash line to the brow area. And see, open. Good. Simple, right? We oui, wee. Oui. Yeah, we. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I couldn't help it. <laughs> <laughs> oui, oui. Okay, so now that the vanilla shade is applied all over, you're going to take your darker shade. And for this particular look, you don't need more than just two colors. You need something that's going to create an indentation, like a crease shade, uh, which I'm using more of a rosewood, um, a little bit of a pinky brown shade. And again, it's matte textured. And we're going to start the application at the outer lid. And I, I like to use an angled brush. Like, like so. Uh, you, you could be a little bit more precise with this. So really focus the, uh, the deposit of color at the outer lid. And then once it's there, go ahead and switch your brushes to a blending tool. Add some more shade to the brush and then just blend it. And you can take the brush and um, kind of blend it towards the inner brow. Let's see, open. Gorgeous. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, guys, now that we're finished with the two applications of the eyeshadows, that's the vanilla and the darker brown, we're going to work on one of the most challenging part of this look, and that's the winged liquid liner or gel liner. But the best thing you could do is map it out with a shadow because you can make a mistake and it's easily to remove. If you use a liquid liner and once it's on, it's on and you're going to have to remove and reapply, which could be, you know, uh, difficult and annoying. So <laughs> we're going to prevent you from doing that by using a shadow. I like to start to brush the angled brush, uh, the longest tip at the outer lid and just kind of map out where you want the wing to start and end. So go ahead and look right here to the camera. And now, I'm at, when your eyes are open, you could really gauge to see where, how high the wing you want, or how high you want the wing to be. So we're going to start by drawing the wing first. Okay, go ahead and look down. I like to start to brush the angled brush, uh, the longest tip at the outer lid, and just kind of map out where you want the wing to start and end. So go ahead and look right here to the camera. And now, I'm at, when your eyes are open, you could really gauge to see where, how high the wing you want, or how high you want the wing to be. So we're going to start by drawing the wing first, and then just shade it in, and then look down again. And now we can use the longest bristle part of the brush near the tear docks. And again, we are going to go over this with the black gel liner. We're just kind of giving it a little trace, sort of mapping it out before we do apply the black. Now we're going to apply the, uh, the black gel liner. And this is from my collection, and it's called Inked. And again, using the same brush, you're going to start and just color right over it. So it's a lot easier than starting from scratch with the black, because black is really hard to remove, especially if you're using a liquid or gel liner. And look straight. So as you see, it kind of wings up to the corner. You don't want the wing to fall down under the lower lash line because that's going to make the eyes pull down. So you want it to elevate. So you want the wing to no match up. Eyes. No droopy eyes. <laughs> Perfect. All right, guys. Now that we applied the top liner, which is a lot of fun to do, right? And I think she looks amazing already. 
Uh, we're going to apply the finishing touch to the eyes, and that's the bottom liner. And today we're going to use a pencil. You can use whatever pencil that you have at home. Um, I'm using Raven from my collection. Again, another waterproof item. So a lot of fitness, you know, ladies love to wear this during their workout. That's exactly what I was just thinking, that this would be great for the gym. Right. Because I always have that problem. If I wear my makeup to the gym, it always smudges by and the time And you look like I'm a done. raccoon eyes, yes, right? Thank you. Yeah. Well, I have a lot of people that wear this to the gym, and they look fresh and beautiful at the end. So, so we're going to start the um, outer okay. lid. Okay, the second to last thing I'm going to apply is one of my favorite parts, and that is the lips. Lips are my favorite part of a woman's face, so, and red is my favorite lip. I said favorite like three times, but it is. It, all, it is all my favorite part, so. And this must be why I love Nola, because yeah. lips are my favorite part, too. And red's my favorite lip color, and that's your favorite lip it's color, right? It's the color I wear. Yes, it's perfect. <laughs> and more women should be wearing color on their lips. I think it's feminine, so. Uh, the line I'm going to use is something that we're testing right now. It's in my production. It's in production for my current long, uh, line coming on summer, and it's a waterproof red liner. So we're going to start <gasps> lighting, and it's perfect. So it stays on all through any through anything. So we're just going to start by shading in the lips. Now you don't have to be too perfect, but just be aware of your lines because it is red. It's really going to show if there's any type of inconsistency or if it's you know, if the line is a little crooked or so on, but just take your time. And if you make mistakes, I'll show you a quick and easy way to fix it. At the very end. Now all you have to do is fill it in with the red lipstick. So grab your favorite red lipstick and just fill it in. And for this particular look, you're going to want something that's a little bit more matte. Although I'm using something with a little bit more sheen, more of a satin texture, so there's going to be a little bit more texture on the lips. Use a flat lip brush and just go for it. Now, is this coming out in your new collection also? Yes, this is in production as well. I'm in love with this lip color. As you can see, it's not necessarily really matte, so there's a slight sheen, which gives the lips more, you know, fullness. Looks more plump, you get that pouty effect. Oh, we love pouty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Beautiful. All right, so now that the uh, lips are applied, if you do make any mistakes and if the lines are not as sharp as you want or clean as you want, then the easiest way to clean it up without restarting or redoing them is just grabbing the same foundation that you've been using, a cream foundation, only a little in the brush and just kind of trace around the lips and this will make it really simple for you to get a really clean look perfect now, Nolan I yes. love lip gloss would it be okay or would it be a complete sin to put a little gloss over no the lips? you could and especially okay. if you want to do a more lighter version of this uh, if you want that same feeling of the 50s and a pinup look, then you can do a dark liner on top, no bottom liner, and then do a sheer red lip gloss. You know, that can also give you that same look. Okay. All yeah. right, to finish the look, we're just going to add a little color to your cheeks and some lashes with mascara, and you're done. So just go ahead and grab a color, neutral shade, dust, and sweep against the apples of the cheek. It's all about the apples of the cheeks when the, in the 50s, so the colors need to start right here. And we're just gonna apply a little bit of my mascara, which is amazing, and look right here. And look here. Now you could add false lashes if you wanna take this look to the next level. Or you can just add a nice coat of mascara. And to finish it, just highlight the skin under the eye. This will give you that very 50s glow with a vanilla shade eyeshadow. You know, you can do the same shade that you used earlier. And just down the bridge of the nose, maybe a little bit of the forehead and the chin. And you're good. And I think you look like Betty Page. Woohoo! <laughs> well, ladies, again, this is Nolan Robert, and you can find his entire cosmetic line at www.nolanrobert.com.
robertcosmetics.com. You guys have got to go check this out. It's just amazing. Thank you so much oh, for coming. Thank you for having me. Yay. And thank you. Thank you guys for watching.